to the Prayer Motivator devotional broadcast with Daniel White III. We are glad that you have joined us as Daniel White III encourages us to pray without ceasing throughout the day, every day, for the glory of God. Welcome to another Prayer Motivator devotional broadcast. This is broadcast 210, and we give God the glory uh, for allowing us to uh, encourage you in this important matter of prayer. It is always so good to be with you, uh, to encourage you, to exhort you, to motivate you, to challenge you to pray. Today I would like to begin by sharing with you a poem, as I normally do, titled The Mercy Seat by the ex-slave transporter John Newton, the same John Newton who wrote Amazing Grace. Approach my soul the mercy seat where Jesus answers prayer. There humbly fall before his feet for none can perish there. Thy promise is my only plea. With this I venture nigh. Thou callest burdened souls to thee, and such, O Lord, am I. Bowed down beneath a load of sin, by Satan sorely pressed, by war without and fears within, I come to thee for rest. Be thou my shield and hiding place, that sheltered by thy side, I may my fierce accuser face and tell him thou hast died. O wondrous love to bleed and die, to bear the cross and shame, that guilty sinner such as I might plead thy gracious name. Poor tempest tossed soul, be still. My promised grace receive, tis Jesus speaks, I must, I will, I can, I do believe. Ladies and gentlemen, our prayer motivator verse from the Word of God today is Matthew twenty six thirty nine, which reads, And he went a little farther, and fell on his face, and prayed saying, O oh my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Our prayer motivator quote today is from Evan Roberts. He said, Prayer is buried and lost, and heaven weeps. If all prayed, the wicked would flee from our midst or to the refuge. Our prayer motivator devotional today is part two of our series titled Praying in the Name of Jesus Christ by that Prince of Prayer, the uh, Dr. John R. Rice who is going on to be with the Lord now. And I hope that he's smiling down upon me as I'm using his famous book, Prayer, Asking and Receiving, getting down to uh, where the rubber meets the road. Uh, God does not necessarily need us, but we definitely need God. The phrase in Jesus' name is not to be used simply uh, as a magic formula. 
In fact, I do not think, he goes on to say, it was especially intended as words to be said in a prayer. That phrase is not in the model prayer given by our Lord, nor was it used in any prayer recorded of New Testament Christians. We say in Jesus' name, oftentimes as a commonplace phrase, a part of formal ritual in prayers that get no answer. Oftentimes, that proves they were not really asked for Jesus' sake, even though they were asked in Jesus' name. They were not, therefore, asked uh, to please him. But Bible Christians prayed in the will of God, without mentioning that it was in Jesus' name they asked it. This condition of successful prayer is not a matter of words, but of heart. No one can pray in Jesus' name without knowing what the Lord Jesus wants and without wanting just what he wants in that particular situation. Really, to pray in Jesus' name simply means to pray in the will of God to pray for his sake, for his glory, and for his honor. Somebody ought to say amen, amen wherever you are. Now, friend, it is time for us to pray together for Jesus' sake. Let's pray for his glory. Let's pray for his honor and for his sake, not just in his name. Please remember the announcer will provide the information for you to send in your prayer request at the end of this broadcast. Now, friend, please join me in prayer. Holy Father God, we praise you, Lord, and we thank you for allowing us to see another day. We don't deserve to be here, but Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be here. We individually confess our own sins and failures and faults unto you. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive us of our sins. Lord, we pray that you would fill us afresh and anew as your children with the fullness and the power of your Holy Spirit to do your work and to do your will. Take us by our feeble hands and lead us, guide us, and direct us throughout this day to do your will and not ours, to live and to pray for your sake and not for our sake. Lord, we pray today also for all of your pastors to do the same, all of your church leaders, all of your uh, deacons, all teachers in the church, and all of the people in the church to do your will and not theirs. We pray, Lord, for all missionaries around the world, all evangelists who stand upon your word. And Holy Father God, we pray for all governmental leadership, the president and all other officials in this country and around the globe, that you would give them leadership, wisdom, guidance, and direction that we may lead peaceful lives. Now, Lord, we pray for three people that we've chosen from our prayer list uh, of thousands to pray for now. We pray, Lord, for Steve in Austin, Texas. We pray for, that you would help Lauren to open up and to speak to him, help both him and Lauren to find the jobs they need and to be able to move near each other. Lord, we pray for Edwin in Sarimban, Malaysia. Have him to stop his secret affairs and return to his family 
ASAP, as soon as possible. Lord, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for Gary in Uniondale, New York. Have his unsaved loved ones to accept Christ before it is eternally too late. Bring health and healing to his landlord, George. Have his soulmate, Elisa, to have a much closer walk with you, Lord, and to help them to get married and have a family soon. Bless his finances and give him and his family protection. Lord, today I pray for all pastors and their children that you would heal uh, every pastor's marriage and family. And Lord, those pastors who have way with children, we pray that um, your Holy Spirit would, would, would work in all of their lives and bring about heavy conviction. Rebuke and bind the devil and his demons and his hosts, Lord, from every pastor and from every church, from every family, and all the families of the church. Lord, uh, we know that you hate divorce, but divorce is running rampant even in the church today. We pray that you would heal every marriage, heal every family, and uh, straighten out the issues in these families today uh, by your mind and power for those who want to obey you and be faithful to you. Holy Father God, we pray for the following people who have accepted you into their hearts. We pray, Lord, that you would confirm them in the faith and have them to grow in the faith to become the spirit-filled Christians that you want them to be. We pray specifically for Lakeisha in Portsmouth, Virginia, Brenda in Arizona, and Selena in Africa. Lord, we pray your blessings upon them. Thank you for saving them. Thank you for using us in a small way in your great work. Help us, Lord, to be the disciples that you want us to be. And Lord, help them to do the Bible studies that we are sending out. Now, Lord, we pray for the following people who have been saved for a while, but who have chosen to recommit. We've had three to recommit to you today. We thank you for that. Thank you for the uh, other soul that was uh, uh, just was informed of before I came to uh, pray here and to, to do this broadcast of uh, being saved today. We give you the glory, praise, and honor. We rejoice with these who have recommitted their lives to you. Uh, in this decision, and we pray that they will keep their commitments to you and be strengthened in the faith. We pray specifically for Jason in Woodstock, Ivan in Jawa Barat, Indonesia, Rose in Greensburg, Louisiana. We pray, Holy Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for these dear saints. Uh, now, dear friend, if you are listening to this broadcast and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, please notice these verses. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, and 13, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You can count on that. You don't have to you don't have to think about that. For whosoever, verse thirteen says, shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. These are the two verses that delivered my soul from hell. When old Michael Lewis trembling showed me from an old King James Bible these words, uh, pointing his finger to the words, these words jumped off of the pages. Uh, jumped off of the page and spoke to my heart uh, like nothing since. God saved my soul that night, December the 19th, 1979. I called upon the name of the Lord and he saved me. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus that uh, he is Lord and uh, I believed in mine heart my heart that God have raised him from the dead and God saved me changed my life all the way around 
and uh, has blessed me to be able to have an impact upon my children's lives. And he will do the same for you. Do you believe in your heart today that Jesus Christ died for you, was buried and rose again? If you do, please pray with me this simple prayer. Holy Father, I realize that I am a sinner. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. I now believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life forever. Amen. Dear friend, if you have accepted Jesus Christ today into your heart as your Lord and Savior, please contact us today so that we can send you a free copy of our pamphlet titled, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. This will help you get started in your Christian life. Until next time, beloved, remember, pray, think, do. God bless you.